Before beginning this video, I would like to address some of the concerns about the most recent video I did concerning extroverted feeling versus introverted feeling. Many people were concerned that I was misrepresenting those two functions by attributing behaviors or philosophical outlooks to them that are not necessarily a part of the function at all. So I wanted to clarify my position on this, that I'm trying not to be behaviorist. I like the way Tristan Majewski put it in a comment on that video, that typology is about the why and not about the what. In other words, typology can't reliably tell us what an INTJ may believe, but it can tell us why that INTJ will believe it. So while I personally think that certain societies or circumstances tend to funnel preferences towards certain philosophical attitudes, that's only a tendency and it's also not an exact science, and it's also all relative. And it doesn't really talk about typology, because that's great and all, but it's all still surface philosophy kind of stuff. What preferences you have can motivate you to whatever, whatever philosophical preferences you end up being moved to. And that's, that's my intention. And the main problem is it's hard for me to get abstract enough, or ever get abstract enough, to really talk about the processes without it somehow even by just mistake, bringing in philosophical examples or examples of behavior to some degree. Even when I say that extroverted feeling is harmonic and introverted feeling is individualistic, even that still surface philosophies. I can relate to both of those, and I know for a fact that INTPs in general definitely relate to the individualistic idea. It's partly because they repress extroverted feeling, and I didn't discuss how it fits into the stack, but that aside, even the keywords that I've used, if not looked at from the right perspective, don't really work. I think the important thing to remember is is it is about the why, not about the what, when you really talk about typology. And I do use the philosophical examples not to attribute that philosophy as a definition of the function, but simply as a demonstration of it, as an example. And I, I didn't make that very clear, and I also don't think I presented it that way. And I'm probably not going to make it very clear in my extroverted thinking, introverted thinking video here just because of my writing style. But just keep that in mind that if you don't connect with, for instance, Nietzsche's philosophy, then that's okay because I don't think most people do, <laughs> at least to the whole thing of Nietzsche's philosophy. So, um, But I think it demonstrates the process and I think that's useful to see. So thank you for your patience. I'm glad that you uh, did enjoy the video still. and. I will now present extroverted thinking and introverted thinking. Thank you. So, working with the same style of definitions as before and associating thinking with questions of functionality, attributes, and properties of a thing, separate from any value or sentiment it may have, we can then define extroverted thinking as forming judgments about a thing's objective functionality in the world, and introverted thinking as forming judgments about a thing's subjective functionality in the mind of the individual. Another way to put this is extroverted thinking relies on objective facts and information and mistrusts purely subjective ideas while introverted thinking relies on subjective ideas and mistrusts purely objective facts and information. So here we have a very similar dichotomy to that of extroverted feeling versus introverted feeling, except here it is concerning questions of mere function and whether things work rather than of value and whether things are good. When extroverted thinking forms judgments concerning the function of a thing, it examines the facts about the thing while introverted thinking forms such ju judgments by relating the thing to already present internal facts, or properly theories, ideas, models in its head, etc. Thus, extroverted thinking is generally considered goal-oriented and efficient, while introverted thinking is generally considered idea-oriented and analytical, because Although both are trying to figure out how to get from A to B usually, extroverted thinking tends to look at each case more on its own terms and solve it using the data presented from the object, doing things quickly, effectively, and practically. While introverted thinking tends to look at each case and then fit it into an overarching schema that it's developed in its mind to determine the best course of action, meaning it is more naturally theoretical in its approach, analytical in its approach, developing abstract principles and models in its mind which it can then apply to reality.
Another important difference is more philosophical in nature, and the extroverted thinking perspective on it is well expressed by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's character Sherlock Holmes when he says it is a capital mistake to theorize before one has data. Insensibly, one begins to twist facts to suit theories instead of theories to suit facts. I'm sure that both thinking types agree with this statement and try their hardest to follow it, but in general, extroverted thinking always seeks to appeal to objective data, or else commonly held ideas, and in that sense is related to induction. But when it comes time to draw conclusions, extroverted thinking isn't as comfortable working in the uncertain realm of pure personal and possibly ungrounded theories and ideas and conclusions of that sort, so it tends to circle back to the objective facts again. Meanwhile, introverted thinking always seeks to appeal to subjective ideas first, that it figured out itself, which it considers by nature infallible and valid, and which are meant to represent the logical structure of reality. In this sense, introverted thinking is deductive, although it isn't really comfortable in the realm of hard facts and data, having difficulty sorting through it all, and usually just returning back to the realms of pure logic, where that kind of evidence isn't necessary. You only need the rules of reasoning and mathematics and such. So, extroverted thinking is generally safe from holding ungrounded assumptions, but in danger of being deceived by data that is locally or temporarily inconsistent with the general pattern of the universe. So while in Sherlock Holmes' quote, it only makes theories according to the data, if the data is unusual, then it can be deceived. While introverted thinking is generally safe from such deception of the data, but it's also in danger of clinging to ungrounded opinions and coercing facts in order to fit them because it's so sure of them. Extroverted thinking is in general pragmatic and practical, accepting that the use of inductive logic is not a perfect or precise science, as Aristotle emphasizes throughout the ethics and his other works. Nietzsche goes even farther than this, claiming that man should not be the servant of knowledge, and knowledge should be the servant of man. In other words, the focus of extroverted thinking, in philosophy anyway, is not to gain knowledge in itself, but to accomplish purposes, to understand what needs to be understood, and not for any idealistic reason. Extroverted thinking realizes the imperfect nature of inductive logic, but finds it to be good enough for getting things done. In that sense, it is realistic and down-to-earth, and extroverted thinking users often feel that way. We find this attitude again and again in the work of Aristotle, Nietzsche, and Ayn Rand. They are at least trying to be practical philosophers, even if you don't agree that they are, and they're concerned with trying to change the actual world. Karl Marx, again, though he is hailed as a prophet for his introverted intuitive visions, was in practice, or at least was trying, to be a studious and exhaustive researcher, and his credit is as one of the first on-the-spot reporters where he would go to the scene and report exactly what was going on. He wanted to base his ideas on facts. This was something Jung admired in Freud, saying, quote, I came to Freud for facts. I read the interpretation of dreams and I thought, Oh, here is a man who is not just theorizing away. Here is a man who has got facts. Albert Einstein, preferring introverted thinking like Jung, also said of Freud, Freud's sense of reality is less clouded by wishful thinking than is the case with other people. And that's also associated with his personalities in ISTJ, but a part of that is extroverted thinking. Ludwig Wittgenstein, also preferring introverted thinking, had this to say of Freud. Quote, if Freud's theory on the interpretation of dreams has anything in it, it shows how complicated is the way the human mind represents the facts in pictures. So complicated, so irregular is the way that they are represented that we can barely call it representation any longer. This illustrates a very important difference between introverted thinking and extroverted thinking. Introverted thinking is very complete, very balanced, and is seeking ideal forms of organization that aren't perfectly reflected in reality. As a result, when introverted thinking looks at the organizational choices of extroverted thinking, it is often struck by how disorganized it seems, how unbalanced and unfinished, and how while it is very practical and useful for the facts that it's dealing with, it doesn't really seek to understand things on a fu more fundamental level or try to apply to a broader area, at least in introverted thinking's perspective. Thus, when Wittgenstein reviewed how Freud organized his understanding of dreams, he was struck by how complicated Freud seemed to make it and how messy. 
for he was not concerned, Freud was not concerned with symmetry or making sure all the principles worked against each other in a balanced way so that the mind could more easily grasp the concepts, but in recording and organizing objective facts and making theories to suit them as needed and doing what was needed to make them able to work. So introverted thinking is very often in favor of knowledge for its own sake because of its interest in theories over facts, or rather subjective over objective facts. It is exploratory in the sense that its ultimate goal is to understand what is going on on a fundamental level, which requires more thought in theory than extroverted thinking usually thinks is necessary. For instance, if Newton, the INTJ, wants to solve a problem, he invents a rough form of calculus to do it, the goal being the solution. But if Leibniz, who at least I think is very likely an introverted thinking type, if he wants to solve a problem, he may discover from an analysis of the problem that its structure would require a certain kind of system in order to solve it, and that ends up being calculus. But rather than just hurrying for the objective goal, he lingers a while in the subjective realm, fleshing out this calculus idea, this pure idea more and more, until the system becomes strikingly clear making his version of calculus very balanced, clean, and tightly structured. He takes this time to try to flesh it out, to try to figure out. It's almost like an archaeologist trying to scrub away the dirt from this thing that the introverted thinker is trying to find. Newton, however, looks at this process and thinks that this is a waste of time or a fruitless fantasy because there's no real-world goal that can be accomplished by making this idea balanced or fleshing out this idea so much further. But the introverted thinking type Leibniz sees this fleshing out as the whole point. If he can understand the system behind reality, then he can better understand and predict what reality will do in multiple ways, so long as his principles are correct. In short, introverted thinking is trying to develop an internal idea and is often captivated by such internal ideas and trying to figure them out and make a logical sense of them, to figure out their structure. This is done in spite of objective facts, however widely accepted they are, and this is why introverted thinking is also individualistic. Both of the introverted judging functions are individualistic and feel and have a sense of, I have this idea and no one else seems to believe this for some reason. For instance, there's the work of Parmenides, Socrates, Plato, Descartes, and Hume, which all included an important element of your senses deceive you, don't trust them like the masses do, but appeal to pure reason. This is especially evident in the philosophy of Plato, where the objective factual world is considered a mere ever-changing copy of an ideal realm of pure rational forms that can only be comprehended by the mind. Introverted thinking abounds here, and it is just this very notion of ideal forms which proved a major breaking point between Plato and Aristotle, who was the extroverted thinker. Parmenides opposed Heraclitus, the INTJ, in his claim that the universe was always changing, based off of the observable facts of constant growth, decay, and general motion. But Parmenides claimed that contrary to the objective facts, the universe never changes, is never in motion, and is one great indivisible whole, to greatly paraphrase him, anyway. In this claim, he appealed to a rational principle beyond the immediate facts in which we could place our trust, seeing as the principle would never change like the world around us and would always remain consistent no matter how locally abnormal the facts are where we are. There's also Descartes and Hume, who I mention because of their similar denial of objective facts in favor of infallible reason. Descartes denied the truth of everything, reducing himself to cogito ergo sum. Hume went even further than that with his controversial bundle theory, which denied essentially even the existence of the thinking self. These assertions obviously fly in the face of the objective facts, and thus introverted thinking flies in the face of extroverted thinking. Which is why I think it's interesting that Ayn Rand makes it a point in her philosophy that, yes, objects do exist, they are there, and we can talk about them, none of this bundle theory nonsense or denying the existence of things. But of course, those are just philosophies. If you're an extroverted thinker who really likes Descartes, good for you. Go for it, man. Um, I don't necessarily, I'm an introverted thinker, and I don't necessarily agree with all these things, but I think they're interesting, and I think they're a useful way to help understand them. So let me know what you think. I'll do my best to answer any questions in the comment section below, and thank you for watching.